Now, tonight, we begin with, well, what shall I call it? The character study of a legend. That's what it is. The legend of Amelia Earhart, who was lost only 20 years ago in the Pacific and is barely a name to the young. The first woman to cross the Atlantic alone, first woman to fly across the United States alone, first east across the Pacific alone. Now, although she had an almost frenzied public life when she became famous, loneliness was her element. And we shall hope to see why from this essay in biography by Sidney Carroll. Now, he has gone to all the usual sources like books, diary, flight logs, but also to the words she spoke and to the available film clips and to the memories of her friends. And for the leg man and narrator on this assignment, we have called on an old friend, Burgess Meredith. Burgess, the rest of the story is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair Cook. So, let's begin. For ten years, Amelia Earhart was the most famous woman in America. And for those ten years, hundreds of writers filled newspaper and magazine columns with stories of her adventures. Moving picture cameras relentlessly recorded her every move, and photographers uh, pursued her around the globe. So, lest we forget, here she is. You remember? And here she is with her husband, George Putnam. And here she is in one of the planes that she flew. Now, here are some of the actors who will play some of the people she moved among and with whom she worked and sometimes disagreed. And while they varied in their opinions about her, they all agreed on one thing. She was in no way an ordinary person. But let's start with her husband, the publisher, the late George Palmer Putnam. In the spring of 1936, A.E. Amelia came to me and told me she had decided to fly around the world. She'd planned the itinerary herself, of course, and she'd be taking along a navigator. We interviewed a number of prospective men for that post in our home in Rye, New York. Mr. Burns, come in. This is Mr. Burns, dear. Oh, hi. Hi. I've been filling Mr. Burns in on the whole situation. Oh, good. Then we can get right down to business. Now, uh, come on, get down. <laughs> now, I think I've planned the best possible itinerary. We start um, over here at Oakland. Uh, Mr. Putnam and I have already gone over the itinerary. Oh, good. Well, um, what can I tell you about the plane? Well, I'm very familiar with this type of plane. You don't seem too enthusiastic. Well, to tell you the truth, Miss Earhart and Mr. Putnam, as soon as I heard that you were interested in me as navigator, I went into the whole setup pretty thoroughly. And? Well, I don't think you want a navigator along. I think what you need is another pilot. What for? Well, you're going to be landing in some of the most remote places on Earth. You'll be eating all sorts of strange foods. You'll be encountering bugs you've never even heard of. Oh, suppose you get sick. I mean, suddenly en route. You should have somebody along who can take over the controls. Mr. Burns, I'm as strong as a horse. And if I can eat my own cooking, I can eat anything. Now, you'll have to cross that one off. What, uh, what other objections? Well, Miss Earhart, you're plain. If you ever have to put this down in water, and you'll be flying over a lot of water, it'll sink in a minute. There's no more floating power than a brick. Mr. Burns, I don't think there's any possibility of our having to be put down into water. I have lived in this plane for a year. I know it inside and out. I think it's incapable of mechanical failure. I see. <laughs> well, my next point. I don't think your radio is strong enough. Over the ocean, there'll be times when you'll be completely out of contact with land communications. And what do we need a radio for, Mr. Burns, to shout for help? There won't be any shouting for help. Huh? Okay. My final point. 
Hey, this leg of your flight, from Lay, New Guinea to Howland Island. Yes. It's 2,556 miles nonstop. Correct. It's all over water. Correct. Howland Island. It's a tiny island, tiny. I know. Well, if your navigation is one degree off, you'll miss it entirely. After 2,556 miles nonstop, you'll have gas enough left for about one hour's additional flight. One hour in which to hit a tiny pinpoint in the ocean. Well, yes. Well, I think that's foolish. No, it's not foolish at all, Mr. Burns, because our navigation won't be off one degree. Because I will have the best navigator I can find, you, if you're willing. We'll hit Howland right on the nose. Well, suppose we do hit it right on the nose, and then suppose there's a storm when we get there. Or suppose... Well, suppose anything. Mr. Burns, there are certain chances that we have to take. Miss Earhart, I'd like to ask you just one question. Yes? Why are you making this flight? Because I want to.